pick up your newspaper and read a review of a film in which the critic says the performances are so bad, the only way you could get people into the theater is by showing the movie in the street. And there are restaurant critics and music critics who rate conductors and cooks by giving them so many stars or so many aspirins. Well, how would you like to pick up your paper one morning and read a critic say that your favorite minister's performance is dull, that his sermon is off target and his choir is off key? If you live in Cleveland, you can. The Cleveland Press has a church critic. His name is George Plagans, the Rex Reed of religion. said once that the distinctive task of the Christian church is the proper conduct of public worship. This is the thing that, that uh, draws people to church or keeps them away. The evangelicals do the best job. They seem to have an idea that people today want to be entertained. Not that churches are in the entertainment business. What I'm looking for mostly, I think, and these are my prejudices coming out, vigorous preaching, nostalgic singing, friendly churches. Rocky River Presbyterian Church was one where George said the congregation was unfriendly, but the Reverend John Kibbs preaching was fairly vigorous. I don't know whether it's good to be called good by him or not. The test of whether a church is friendly or not is how it approaches the stranger in its midst. Several people in the congregation recognized him, and went over to try to talk to him, and he said, uh, well, not now, not now. I'm trying to evaluate your unfriendliness. The one critic we're interested in is Jesus Christ. I don't think we're the way he saw us. We have prayed for him, and um, we love him. I've never heard of George Clagans. George considers preachers partially performers. This Sunday, George was sitting in judgment on the performance of the Reverend Lewis Davidson at Bethel Temple, a fundamentalist Baptist church. Since performers as such seldom get a chance to respond to their critics, we asked George if he would mind confronting the Reverend Davidson with his critique following the services. Both men agreed. ...take place so that God could get the glory and that blind man could get the good. Just before the service, George told me about a church rating system that someone said sounded like a gourmet's guide to God. And some food and drink uh, designations for churches. For instance, the Ovaltine Church put you to sleep, or the Sanka Church, unstimulating. Then there was the Perrier Church, sophisticated, bubbly. You think it's going to have a kick, but it doesn't. Country time lemonade, folksy. Preachers get on ego trips, too. Billy Graham. Billy Graham puts 60,000 in Cleveland Stadium. In Reverend Potts Church, he has maybe 200 people in his congregation. And Billy Graham can put 60,000 people in a stadium. So what you're really evaluating, then, is personality. There is the charisma of the man. the word. We'll just call fire down from heaven. We'll burn him up. George, I notice you were singing along. Don't you deny yourself the objectivity? by participating like that? No, I think you find out a little more about what you're doing if you're doing it yourself. So do you see why we need to give God the glory for everything that the church accomplishes or tries to accomplish? And the more we give him the praise and the glory for doing it, the more the church is going to receive of his miracle power. This church today was a little country time lemonade. After telling me Bethel Temple's services were like country time lemonade and that the preaching was a little repetitive, it was time for George to sit down and tell it to the Reverend Davidson. Why do um, good preachers like yourself repeat a, a message over and over again? Well, in the first place, George, I'm not so sure I'm a good preacher. I just... Uh, I'll decide I just... that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, well, I don't know what the percentage is. Uh, maybe you know more about it than I do. We only retain a certain percent of what we hear anyway. I love to sing, but I was a little disappointed that I couldn't join in some of the songs. I see this nice white wall behind there. I would suggest that you, you flash the words there because visitors who are here for the first time who love to sing as I do uh, can't join in. Wouldn't that help? I doubt if that's going to totally do it because we like to sing from one chorus to another I, and, I, and, I like and most of it is by inspiration of the leader. Um, and I'm not so sure we could have always the words ready to flash on the screen. We have always had critics in religion. That's what put Jesus on the cross of Calvary, was critics. Sure. Holy smokes. You don't mean I'm a modern-day Pontius Pilate. No, I didn't, re I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> God love you. Thank you. You put Thank some money you. in the collection plate when it came by. Do you make out an expense account and hand it in to your editor when you get back to the paper? I do take it off my income tax, like you do and everybody else does at the end of the year under contributions. Sometimes, if the service isn't too good, I just show my press pass when the uh, plate is passed. 
My favorite minister story is the one about Bishop Angus Dunn, who was the Episcopal Bishop of Washington, D.C., who was having dinner one night at a big party, and seated next to him was the Methodist. And when the uh, waitress came by to pour the wine, the Methodist said, no wine for me. Oh, said Bishop Dunn, a little wine won't <laughs> hurt you. No, said the Methodist, I'd sooner commit adultery. Well, that may be true, said Bishop Dunn, but tonight our choice is between wine and water. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.